Hello ladies and gentlemen, Captain Guitarin here, and today we're going to get started with a brand new playthrough of Star Wars Rebellion. This is the 25th anniversary update. It's a fan-made patch which completely updates the game and makes it a hell of a lot better. If you want it, it's going to be available on RebEd, which I will have a link for in the description. Um, it's completely free. It, it uh, upgrades the base game. I will say that it, it has made the game significantly harder. So I'm going to play this on Expert with a large galaxy, and I may actually lose. Like, as the Empire, typically, I don't really have much uh, opportunity to lose. But uh, with the changes, the AI is much more aggressive, and, and they're going to try to sabotage the economy and whatnot. But I do like watching the intro scene. I don't do it very often. So we will take a look at it. Some of the changes include brand new um, canonical, I guess is the correct way to say it, profile pictures for the uh, characters. They have graphical updates to the um, to the actual fleet battle, which is kind of cool. And there are new overlays on top of the, the character portraits, which give you an idea of what they do at a glance. So, you know, in, in all, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of good changes there. I also modified my game to get rid of the five minute uh, briefing that you can't skip, so it's kind of nice. Okay, the other thing that they did too that you may notice immediately is they've completely changed the map to be a little bit more resulting or resembling, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the canonical um, Star Wars map. So. Here you can see the portraits are a little different. It shows you what they do. R is for recruiter. This is his leadership rating. A, G, C is, um, we look at the status, right? It depend. It shows if they can be an admiral, general, or commander. If, if it's lit up, then they can. If they can train Jedi, there's a, uh, there's something here as well. So go ahead and have Palpatine recruit. First thing I like to do is get all of my characters to where I need them. Um, and I have it, I have also modified the game that Palpatine can tell if you're more sensitive. It doesn't make sense to me, but. And I also believe I have him set up to train Jedi as well. Um, <clears throat> this is this is not an optimal strategy, for sure, for this new thing, because it's so aggressive. But I also like to bring all of my characters to Coruscant initially kind of like as a base of operations and then once i have them there i distribute them where i where i decide i need them in the galaxy so this is uh it's kind of step one and then we'll go through and figure out our facilities and whatnot but the rebels are going to try to hit coruscant typically within the first uh 90 days they send a fleet so having having everything here that i can get is a good thing Vader, okay. Maybe else over here, Jared. Put him here. And we'll take them both. And we'll take a look at all of the sectors and whatnot after I do this. This um, Outer Rim East is kind of annoying. I don't like it. It shows up in every one. I, I think that this is something that I would definitely mod. So that maybe instead of like Outer Rim East being the one that's always... Um, always done maybe it'd be like this uh, Tatooine now the author of the mod did say that all of the uh, sector names are kind of like I don't know temporary placeholders and random things that you just thought made sense but for me I don't think Tatooine is really in wild space I'd say it's more like mid rim um, so I, I may make some ch some changes here to the game and the editor but uh, so far I mean I'm very very pleased with what I've seen from them so let's go ahead and just make sure that we are Consolidating our people. Okay, Piet is a very important character because he has diplomacy, same as Jarajad. So we want to make sure that we get them here because this sector is ripe for the taking. I need all of my diplomats here, and we can change the whole core world over to Imperial control without having to uh, to conquer any if, if we're quick. And that's going to be a huge, huge thing. Um, so much so that as soon as, uh, oh, oh we have Dawa too. I, I've always thought that she should be one of the people that, um, she should be one of the people that recruit 
or not recruit, but uh, research, just because she was ahead of the Imperial Weapons Research Facility. But um, we'll see. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, and, and here, like, uh, if we look at the encyclopedia, you can see that the, the pictures are very much updated. You know, um, the, the bios are updated as well. So that's kind of neat. All right, so we're waiting on this, and I believe it's here. Yep, we're waiting on these two people to show up. And once they're in place, then we can send those back to four. So we do that, and then we'll work on our facilities and figure out what's going to go where. Okay, so Jerajod's here. Now we can send him back. Alright, so Jerajod can use the Force, I think. But we have a message from me. Yeah, that's gonna be big. Okay, what day are they? Here, day nine. Day nine. And we'll send them back. Alright, sweet. Now, I can go through and figure out what's going on. So Coruscant has no planetary shields. That is a big, big issue. We need to get that updated immediately. So we go to planetary shield stat. It's like everybody else is here. We're gonna change him to General Nita so that we can make sure we mitigate any rebel missions to that planet. Also gonna allow him to handle our garrisons. deal with that. Alright, so Caridia has a ship. Now you can see that there's some changes. So the Acclimator dropship, if you take a look at it, um, it's replaced the old ships on here, which is kind of cool. So they've done some updates. They've changed some ships. They've uh, updated the models. This is the Arquintons light cruiser now, which again fits in with the whole, uh, you know, early empire. And I, I love it. These are good changes, in my opinion. Um, obviously, we have the Death Star. And an Imperial Dreadnought, which they have made not as slow, because it's a, it's a key part of <coughs> picket ships and whatnot, which is kind of nice. Before, it had a major penalty for speed, and they took, they took that away. Um, doesn't look like they did anything with this yet, but I, I would assume that at some point this may turn into the... Um, the carrier class from Rebels, I can't remember the name right now. Hero Star Destroyer, so the model's updated in the game, it looks really nice. Um, huge, huge uh, upgrade there. And then the Victory Star Destroyer, again, the model's upgraded in the game, you can see kind of like a, a better image of it here. Um, very cool. The Victory 2 is nearly as big as the Imperial 1, at least in the models in the game. I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be, like, I guess Star Wars IRL, but uh, it is pretty cool. So we're going to do some our Quentin's like cruisers. We're going to build two of them uh, to help round out the fleet. And we also have a facility here to build additional things. So we're going to build two more shipyards here. We're going to fill this planet with shipyards. Ready is locked down. Also have a shipyard on Kamenor. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're just going to start building an Imperial Star Destroyer. Forget about it, and in about 400 days or so we'll have one, and it should be great. Like, let's have a troop training facility, and one extra enemy slot, so we'll probably throw another troop training facility on there. Let's just round it out, let's go down here, in Nubia we have nothing, in Exodine we have a construction. Facility. So what I want to do here first is build two. Um, since this is kind of like our foothold into the sector, I'm going to build two gen cores just so that it's not able to be landed on by the rebels. And then I'll fill out the rest of the construction yards and use that as kind of like a central uh, construction facility to build places elsewhere. Okay, so here we have another place that we can make an Imperial Star Destroyer again. Um, it's kind of like investing in the future. I don't need it now, but when it's ready, it'll be a big advantage. 
and finally out here, um, nothing. So, at this point, we're just waiting for all of our people to arrive, so we'll go fast now. And we found that Jarajad has the ability to use the force. We expected that. There is a message from the Emperor. Alright, Emperor Palpatine. Go ahead and recruit. Filler. Facility design. Alright, so we have Brandy and Ozel and Rix, and none of them are. Looks like none of them are actually force sensitive. We'd have got the message. We'll get it next uh, next day. No, if they are, it takes one day of them being with one of the main characters. But, uh, so that's good. So then we can uh, we can go very slow, and we can start sending them out there. Uh, Darth Vader. I am going to use him as diplomacy now because it's so important for me to grab these systems before the rebels do. And we're just waiting on Nita at this point. Yeah, there's troop training, so we put Veers to work as well. Okay, great. Orlock's here. That's great. Orlock is a facility research designer. Get him here relatively soon. A45, so he should be here. Them over. We gotta check them for Jedi status next time the Emperor pops up. And then we'll send them out to do what they're supposed to do. Alright, let's combine our fleet here too. I like to have just one Doom stack at the beginning because the Rebels are very strong. Uh, because their fighters are just so superior to the TIE fighters, and Star Destroyers have no defense against fighters. Lord Tantel joins. Looks like Vader's doing his job. Good to see it. I am going to go all the way up to the top before we stop any of those missions. Let's go ahead and fast. Let's see if we can get some other stuff going. Just waiting for the Emperor to pop out at this point. Okay. Clear Thanes, another diplomat. Huge deal. Okay, no one else here is a good eye candidate, so we can send uh, these people off to do stuff. Now, Peter Thane's um, one of my favorite characters, actually. Like, uh, obscure characters. Was in the book uh, The Truce at Bakura, which which I really liked. It was a very uh, very different type of Star Wars book, but it wasn't bad. Um, but he's a good diplomat, and that's what we can do far is up here. In case you're not sure who to use where. That's how you can tell if they have that ability. Yet, for example. Also, excellent diplomat. Jared And the Emperor would be too, but you don't ever want to take him off Coruscant. There's too many bonuses you get from having him there. And then here we're going to have uh, Veers do his troop training research. Alright, and as soon as we're finished with that, we're also going to build a ship construction, or a shipyard here. And the reason being that having a shipyard on Coruscant means that Coruscant's going to be our most strongly defended planet, so having all of our missions running on Coruscant, like our um, research missions, makes it just much less likely that they're going to be attacked or whatever, since we'll always have a, a high presence here. It'll be very difficult for the Alliance to do missions against us. That's that's my hope. This is, this is bad. Uh, this is a rebel planet here, so we need to get out here and immediately get this up because if they flip this planet to the rebels probably most of the sector is going to join the rebellion there is a huge huge penalty um, if you lose if you lose a planet that you're occupying that doesn't actually uh, want you there it's a bit of a problem All right, let's go ahead and recruit so now we have Kiev who can do ship design research Vader's almost done. A 
Okay, so this guy, who's always been one of my favorites, um, I, I just liked his armor from the original. Like, you have to understand, the pixel art in 1997 when this came out, I'd use my imagination to see what he looked like. I mean, this is an interesting um, take on it too, but I've always liked his armor and his mysteriousness. So uh, the fact that he's force sensitive would be pretty cool because he should have some good stats. Oh yeah. And let's not waste him. Let's let's send them out to do stuff. Um, I want I want to try to get him upgraded as much as I can. So we're going to have him go here and uh, do some espionage and come back. And then after Palpatine recruits everybody, we'll also have uh, Palpatine conduct dread Jedi training. In this case, Sith training. Right. On uh, Coruscant. It should be fun. Our Quintance is out. Okay, we got Koval. That's good. There is a message from Lord Vader. Right now we need to build that. There is a message from the Emperor. Orbital shipyard, we can build two, so we'll do that. A manufacturing message has been received. As you wish. Bubbles gonna go ahead and do some troop training. Okay, so Vader has finished with this planet. We'll send them on to the next one. Alani. Banking planet. Alright, so we have General Nita right now. Um, just looking at these leadership ratings, they're all very high. 129, because they get a bonus from the Emperor being here. Okay, 150, that's that's the cap. So he's he's by far our best uh, current admiral. Oh, oh look, so we've checked. And we're gonna be having some uh some people coming in, so what we're gonna do is prep for them. Off little TIE Fighters. Put Brandy here. Admiral. We're gonna make sure that he's not in the Star Destroyers. The Star Destroyers are the first thing that they try to attack. Put him in the Acclimator. This is this is kinda like high level. That way if the Star Destroyer gets destroyed for any reason, you still have your command crew. So we'll make him an Admiral. Need somebody with a high combat rating. Bonus for 84 is pretty good for these guys. They don't typically have much. He can't be a commander. That's, that's a waste. He can't be a commander based on the way it's set up. But Nita. 79. Kev. 37. Okay. So Screed is going to be my commander. Um, Darth Vader, for example, as a commander, makes your fighters amazing because he's a fantastic pilot. So we'll do that. Let's take a look at what they're coming at us with. They're bringing only four squadrons, so this isn't going to be much. They're going to probably run away. But our force is overwhelming compared to them. We're also going to make Dala a commander just because she's here. She can do that. And we have both our gen cores up, so they can't actually hurt us. We've got plenty of fighters. But this will be a really good opportunity to show you the upgraded combat, assuming, and I'm going to save it here, assuming that the game doesn't crash, because sometimes it does crash when you're going to. That, now that's always been a bug. It's not specific to this. There is a message from one of your field personnel. 121. So we got some time until they'll be here. Sisabu joined. Build another ISD. That up. Performance have provided information about delay. What's going on there? Okay, we're good. Doing espionage on it, which is, uh, Good, I guess. There's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff. Yeah, I think that I can do I can do better on the names. And he also moved around systems and stuff like this. Like um, but overall, I mean, full marks on, on on the breadth of the changes, and all the stuff that this guy has done to make this mod amazing. I I, I think I can help out with the names though. Like this like Hyderian way and 
This up here is a Mandalorian space, which is fine. I mean, but we can probably come up with a little bit better sector names, I think. I also want to rearrange this, this just a little bit. Like I said, I, I don't want that. I want the Tatooine, and I think Tatooine should be here, just based on, you know, the, the galactic thing that I'm aware of. Maybe switch this out, but we'll see. We'll see. Tatooine was such an important uh, planet for how far away and seemingly insignificant it was. Alright, so we have a construction yard. We got Pelion as well. Oh, no, B Bane Nothus. Okay. Um, uh, have an idle construction facility, which we don't ever want to have. I gotta find it. It's here. Yeah. So Exodine has this, so we'll go ahead and get the rest of those construction yards that we need. And then we can start pumping in facilities at Nubia. What I may do... Let's take a look at... So here we can see that we have 38 mines and 36 refineries. So I can drop two mines without losing any um, maintenance points. What I want to do long term is I want to destroy every facility on Nubia and make that a shipbuilding facility with 14 shipyards. And that'll just be where we pump out ISDs. Essentially, I want every sector to have one planet that we sacrifice the economy for to build up. That, that's the goal. Ultimately, what I would want to have is conquering the Outer Rim and having all our mines and refineries here funneling resources into the core world. It's so hard to do that because you basically have to uh, completely redo how it's set up. But um, that, that's kind of like the, the, the goal. I mean, that's probably how it would work in a, in a real economy. Let's go ahead. Faster again. All right, Battle of Coruscant, here we go. So we can see that they have some Alliance Escorts. Let's take command so that we can see the new interface. All right, now at first you might say it doesn't look that different, but you can see that things have been updated quite a bit. Like for example, when I go to give my fleet orders, if I do this, um, I can do capital ships. See that it has this cool icon. I can do fighters. I'm digging it. I can tell it to go back into the ship, you know, etc. I can tell it to do a Death Star uh, run if if I'm a rebel and I have fighters. Um, so that's that's kind of neat. Over here, we have the same thing. We have the Star Destroyer as Task Force One, etc. Let's take a look at the models. Um, we're going to go ahead and zoom in to the Imperial Star Destroyer. So the model is significantly better. If you've never played this before, you're probably like, what? That looks awful. This is a game from 1997. This, this looks amazing. You know, what we've been able to port into this game uh, and, and upgrade the graphics and everything. So full marks to the team that did this. And here's the Arquintans. So if we look at this... This, uh, this entire model and ship got changed out, and it's so much cooler and more useful. Um, if you're a fan of the Mandalorian, you've probably seen that before. You can see I have four Arquintans class cruisers in this, and then here's our Acclimator dropship. Now, the Acclimators do not have weapons in this game. Um, they're simply used to put troops on the planet, so we won't be sending them out at all, and they shouldn't be in a task force. Looks like they are, but we just won't be giving any orders to them. We want them to stay out of the battle. In a lot of ways, it's kind of like the old, you know, like uh, battles where the, the generals would sit in the back, etc. Let's go ahead and look at the new sprites for the TIE Fighters. Um, very cool. Very different than they were before, a little more detailed. And now, now we're going to look at the Rebellion. So let's take a look at what came in on the other side of the planet here. If I can click one of them. Oh, 
All right. Um. Trying to see one of the rebel ships. It's hard to do. There we go. Okay, so here we can see the new model for um, fighter carrier. Pretty cool. It's like a giant flying hangar. Like I said, they had one of these in Rebels. I I can't remember what they called it because they gave it a new name. It always used to be the uh, Alliance Escort Carrier in this game, which is where the model came from. And here we can see that there's the um, yeah. Uh, I think this is the like I, I want to say like SG seventy seven or something. I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's good to see that you know it looks more like what you expect. This was in um, the Empire Strikes Back whenever they were leaving off. Pretty cool. And then they also have their fighter units. So we can take a look at those too. Okay. Well, when we get into the furball, we can do it. So let's go ahead and reset the camera view. And we'll let this play out because I know that they're just going to run away. We can't force them to stay in battle right now, unfortunately. And I'm not going to give any orders to my fleet. I don't want to lose any TIE fighters trying to you know, rush across the map and attack them. We'll probably lose a couple. And it's just not worth it. But it, it is pretty cool to see this. I mean, like, the, the Star Destroyer is so good looking. In this game, it used to literally just be a triangle kind of thing. And then if you play it on Steam, it may not even look that good. It might be all pink and stuff like mine used to be. Oh, man, I dig that so much. That's so cool. All right, so the Rebel Fleet has left, and as we expected, we are victorious. Sending him back in to do his work. Helani has joined. Let's take a look at what we get here. Nothing. Keep it up. All right. Oh, Viridian, huh? Not force sensitive. Yeah, this is this is big. Now that we have picked up some more planets, you can see that our maintenance goes up. We need to spend these points to get fleets. Oh, ooh. You can see that there's going to be two hits on our stuff already. It looks like they're coming in. Twenty-two. Huh? Day 150. We can definitely head that off. Let's see what the attack is over here. It's kind of cool because I don't, I don't get to see this this often. Uh, day 158. They might actually fight us here if we go do this, which would be kind of cool. I see that they don't have any ships with it, at least none that I can see. Uh, what is the confirmed move here to here? Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna send our fleet to meet them. Confirm move here is five days. That's good. And then we'll be at Gastro Minor when they come out of hyperspace, and they'll have to retreat. And hopefully that gives us enough time to get to Trangilla, uh, Chandrilla and also fight them. They may fight us at Trangilla. That would be kind of fun. I'd like to have an early space battle where I think I have an advantage. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really kind of pretty uh, stoked about this really that's awesome and if you pay attention like you can see on on your calm stat when they're coming in it's tough though because if this is here it doesn't show up on top of you um but it is neat that i was able to to notice that we're about to have visitors a manufacturing message has been received all right so we should be there in a couple days and i just have to check Okay, let's go slow again. I gotta confirm the move. Six days. Okay, so we will have enough time to, to head off both attacks. That's really cool. And do we have our shipyard yet? We do not. 
We do have a nice surplus of refined materials, which means that anything that we build right now is building on schedule, which is good to see. Yeah, we got Grammel. There is a message from the Emperor. He's a usually pretty strong commander. Yeah, one 148 leadership rating. That's literally perfect. Okay, uh, 149. Let's let's pause it again just in case we have an issue. I don't expect them to fight us. But I'm not going to give them any my ships any orders until we see what they do. Oh no. Do we not have... Okay. We do have TIE Fighters. Whew. I was afraid I didn't take any because I remember we offloaded them previously. Um, but yeah, they, they ran away. So that's, that's fine. No reason to get any of our ties hurt. Especially because I need to jet off to that next place. The thing is that I would just go in here and click the you know, um, get instant victory button. Except that I think that it may actually simulate some of my TIE Fighters dying. Very slow, and then we take it to Tendrilla. Keep them off there. And I think that's that's going to be the best way to do it. Um, if there were a lot of rebel planets, I would actually let them invade my planet and hope that they flip it, since we have a pretty high rating here. And then when I go back with the fleet, if I blast their um, garrisons off the planet and the planet is able to rejoin us willingly, it usually flips a lot of the planets in the system onto your side fully. And that's that's huge. So we can we can use that tactic um, in these other sectors if if we end up losing a planet. And that's why like a planet like Shilly is a problem. I'm trying to see if there are any other rebel occupied planets. Nubia is a problem. If they get that planet, it's gonna have repercussions for me. So that'll be our priority after this uh, after we get the sector. We do not yet have that shipyard. We're really kind of behind in shipyard development, to be honest. And, um, that's, that could be a problem in the future. We gotta hurry up. Shipyard idle on Peridia. There we go. Candrilla. Oh, they do have a full fleet. Yeah, they, they may very well fight us, actually. This this could be pretty even, their fighter advantage. I'm, I'm gonna... I'm gonna unpause the battle. Okay, they're not gonna fight us this time, but they're very close to uh, having a position that would hurt. I mean, my Star Destroyer will win this, but it will take some pretty severe battle damage. It'll probably be right off for quite a while after this. So it's, it's good to see that they're not willing to fight us, but essentially at this point, we're just trying to head them off so we don't have to worry about um, the logistics of battle right now. And you can see the other disadvantage that we have is we have to launch the TIE Fighters from the bay, so you can only launch so many TIE Fighters at once. Whereas if they have hyperspace um, engines like the X-Wings and Y-Wings, they can come in already ready for battle. Gives the Rebels a slight advantage there too. Okay. Let's go ahead and go slow. Looks like Piet has finished his Mission. We're going to send them to the next one. Chandrilla is done. Great job. Send them here and get that kind of shored up. And we're going to take our fleet back to Coruscant just to make sure Coruscant is protected. Vader is finished on this planet, so we're going to send him to the floor. Finally, send Jared John to be stunned to the SMS. Oh, 
Here we go. Hopefully it didn't... Oh no, Jirajad's been captured. Shit. Well... We're gonna get him back. They were able to get through my defenses. Let's also double check. I want to see if we have any idle construction yards. Yes. And idle ship facility. That's unforgettable. Let's get that ISD boat. Destination. Then them a. It's training facility. Build them another ship. Never have two. All right, yeah. So this will be this will be good. Um, it should instantly boost our approval rating up if I can clear the their people out of the way. So let that go. The risk is that you uh, is that you lose a character that was stationed there. Jirajad's not there, so I'm gonna have to wait for him to escape unless I can find and kill those rebels. Now that that's big. So we we bombed all of the, uh, the rebel troops out. They're gone, and as you can see, that the entire sector has jumped over to our side. They recognize that we want to protect your colonies, um, that we're stronger than the rebels, and that that puts some people that were on the fence back over to us. So now we control the entire sector, which is huge, absolutely huge. I'm just gonna go through real quick and double check all of our. Stuff. Okay. So we didn't get any new facilities, but that's totally okay. And then we can leave our fleet here for the moment. Definitely need another Imperial Star Destroyer, I think, just because it'll give us additional colonies. It's big. Or additional fighters. Fighters are so important. Just looking at how it's progressing here. Do we have it yet? No. There we go. Shelly's about to get attacked. Looks like they were there and they left. So the orbital shipyard has been deployed, so now we can start our ship design research. Grand Admiral Thrawn will be the other character that can do research, and then we'll also put um, the last guy on it as well. Just want to make sure that everybody here is good to go. Yeah, I think I'm just a missing Jared Odd because he was captured, so that's why I have a diplomat. That is not where I expect them to be. But I, I definitely recommend that you play through this. There's some really cool stuff. It's just annoying at this point. And now I bet since they're only sending this, they're going to try to uh, destroy everything on this planet. Alright, let's go ahead and see if we can head them off here. 204, 205. So we'll definitely, we'll definitely get them off the planet. Whether or not they bomb everything and or put troops on it, I'm not sure. Let's see. They're not gonna see, we lost some Tie Fighters, but we also took out some of their X Wings. Was our person captured? Okay, Ben Asada is another one of our diplomats. So we are going to uh, start colonizing. 
deep for. This is very close to us. It's an RP down here. Pick this up because there's a lot of different uh, there's a lot of ones out there. I think Jakku should definitely be in the other one. Just trying to find some minor characters. Here we go. New thing. Send them to Ricotta Prime. Where's Vader? Vader get captured? Actually, planetary assault them. Screw Excellent. We didn't hurt. We didn't have any losses. All right, there we go. We got our planet back. And now we can go back up. Off the planet because the planet likes us so much we don't actually need to have a garrison here in order to keep it. Go. All right. Pretty pleased with this overall. So until you have two planetary shields, they can continue to just land troops. But the good news is that as they... Oh, now they have 12. See, this is a problem. I can't... This fleet would actually be death for me right now. So I, I don't want to mess with 12 Starfighter squads. It's just too much for me to handle. So if I go there, which we will, and... Uh, they're still there, that's gonna be a problem. I think we'll have to we would have to withdraw from that fight. I'm not gonna risk my Star Destroyer. The only one that I have currently against that. Speaking of that, let's see how our other Star Destroyers are. Yeah, about halfway through. Coruscant still getting its shipyard. Check on here, we don't have any new characters yet. I have a lot of idle characters. It's kind of funny that the Emperor or the Rebellion talks about freedom and equality, and here they are occupying planets that want nothing to do with them. Of course, they'll claim that they're brainwashed, but these are these are proper Imperial citizens who know their worth. All right, so that one's gone. So we can target the military facilities. Okay, so there's a gen core here. We're gonna have to actually assault. Man, our stormtrooper regiments are just doing so well. Look at that. These guys are veterans. They haven't uh, haven't even taken any losses yet, and they've taken two planets. You love to see it. Thankfully, Ward Tantel didn't have any, uh, or Tandel doesn't have any facilities on it. I'm trying to think. Um, maybe, okay, yeah, so what we can do here is we can do this. Let's go ahead and build two. Two Gen Core level ones. 
cap that planet off so it can't be retaken. Then, we're gonna drop all these mines and refineries here and just fill the whole damn planet up with, uh, with the shipyard. And we'll start having an inner core sector. Like I said, each, each of these uh, sectors, I want one to be like a troop training facility, I want one to be a uh, dedicated shipyard, and then the other one to be a dedicated shipyard. The other ones can have kind of a mixture of all of them. It's probably good to have almost every one of the planets. The troop training facility, since uh, getting troops deployed quickly, is, is kind of a, a high-level strategy for this. But we're at 45 minutes, so I think that this is a good place to stop for episode one. I'm just going to double check. Actually, let's let's go try to take Chandrilla back before we do anything. Just, just because we can. And we'll have to make a decision about that. We confront that fleet. I mean, we may not be able to take them quite yet, but as soon as I get one of these Star Destroyers to pop out, we'll be able to have 12 squadrons, and then pretty soon we'll also get TIE Interceptors. And the gap narrows quite a bit in terms of Starfighter tick capability. Once we get TIE Defenders, there, there's no... Uh, there's no comparison. We're just better. One of our agents is reporting in. All right, so we're also going to have to planetary assault this. There is a message from Lord Vader. What happened to the rest of our guys? Oh, I didn't bring them back. I've had... I just attacked them with one... That's that's hilarious. I attacked them with one regiment. And that regiment didn't die and still killed them. It's, just, it's, just it's like they're also going to be at times. Yeah, see, the the rebels are very much more active under this uh, under this mod. Like, it's just a constant thorn in your side. Whereas, if you play the the base vanilla game, you can go 150 days without you know an actual attack. Sure, they might like blockade something, but uh, this is this is super annoying to deal with. I totally understand now why the Empire was sick of it. As soon as our troops are here, we'll, okay, we will assault it. No casualties. And, is the and we got our planet back. Alright, let's find our last diplomats. I think that we had one more here. Yeah. Piet. Sent Piet into the deep core as well get these planets on our side. Alright, that's a good, that's a much better natural stopping point. So we'll go ahead and pick up from here next time. Thanks so much for joining. Um, do check it out in the description. Very cool. Um, one of my favorite Star Wars games. I really hope that the rumored Star Wars strategy game that was supposedly coming out maybe this year or at least being in active development last year when it was leaked is still happening because that would be awesome. Very cool thing. Thanks so much for watching. Captain Tarn here. See you in the nurse.